There we go. Whew, I thought that wasn't going to load then. Well, hello, you gorgeous lot. It's Gran here with another episode from the Rusty Gears server. Let's have a look. I've got 12 pies left. Let's see if we can get through this with just 12 pies. Now, Bean, um, getting rid of stuff at my base. Let me just uh, come down. And I think, yep, yeah, I can put uh, this on here. Uh, there. And I could, uh, no, I can't put another one on there because it won't fit. Haha, <laughs> let's just leave that there. Right then. So this might just be, what is that over there? Oh, it's my horse. Well, it's not my horse, it's a horse. Grand as good is not, nothing in there. Right, let's have a look. It is 10 o'clock in the morning. Let's see if we can do, like, if I can show you the last bits that I've changed at my build site. Oh, look at all these trees. Going to be in bloom soon. Producing fruit. There's loads of them. Somebody will get them. No, they won't. So I'm hoping this is the penultimate video from the Rusty Gear service for season three from me. I'm hoping we're going to, there's going to be another one, but I can't guarantee that. It depends very much on everyone's availability. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep your fingers crossed and hope that we do. I'm not going to show you in there because Per and Sid have been giving some final touches to the church. So, and that'll be for them to show. So, on the way to my little teleportation square outside my shop, which I never finished, never got back to finish it, is the formal garden that I made. I was planning on putting some little statuettes in here. Little statues and shapes and things. Whoa. Oh, a bit of lag there. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that because... It's just getting so choppy, so laggy, and I'm losing, losing recordings. I'm hoping this will be all right because I'm not doing any chiseling. I'm just looking. So here it is. I wasn't, um, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to show you the process in this, but it's pretty simple, really. It's choosing the leaves that are going to look best. And I chose these, which are the redwood leaves. They were the darkest leaves. And I felt a box plant, um, typically is quite a dark leaved um bushy little plant with lots of tiny little leaves on it so it makes a solid look when you look at it and these were the nearest ones that i could find so i did try maple i tried um oak um i tried pine but they just didn't go at all these were the darkest and they went really well now of course the other thing about these leaves is that you can't chisel them because box on a little edging or formal garden like this would be a lot well not a lot smaller but they wouldn't have the fluffy bit on the edges they would be more dense so that they would be more the shape would be more defined so but this is the best you can do without chiseling them It'd be nice if you could chisel leaves but that would be quite nice make some little topiaries in here couldn't i and then this the biggest sh um uh, empty spaces within each of the shapes I wanted to put some flowers in to give it a little bit of colour as well so here we've got the golden poppies here we've got the heather uh, here we've got wood over here we have these uh, wild daisies we've got the cat mint here and we've got these orange mallow there so yeah and this side, when I did this side, I had to change it a little bit because I didn't know at the time, or I didn't notice it at the time, should I say, that this side is a little bit smaller than this side. And that is because of the archery range just here. <laughs> so, yeah, so I had to do a little bit differently. But if you were walking around it, you wouldn't be able to tell, really. And I've tried to match the flowers for each of the um, spaces. So it's only slightly differently, or should I say slightly different, but it's different nevertheless. So, yeah. So that was the formal garden to fill in that empty space at spawn. And as you can see, spawn is nicely, nicely finished off. Awesome. So I'm going to whiz off to my base now. 
via my little square teleportation square. And we're going to have a look at the last things that I changed at the base. If I can if I can get going, that is. Yeah, we're going. We're going. So here we are. Let me take this off and let us go. I hope there's no uh, I hope there's nothing on here that's going to kill me. And we'll just let this initial choppiness settle down while I get over here. Here we go. There we go, it's settled down. Hopefully it'll be fairly smooth this for the rest of the video because I'm not going to do any chiseling. But there was so much I haven't done to this place, really so much. There was going to be a docking area down here with ships and things, you know? The ones you see uh, the elves come in, in and out of in the in the films. Oh, didn't get to that. Oh, there's something I've got to I've got to actually put my angel belt on to show you this because you probably won't be able to see it very very well down at the bottom. But one of the things I finished was that space on top of my dome. Do you remember it? It's been sat there since I started the dome, and uh, I haven't really had an idea, or I hadn't had an idea for actually finishing this. I came across a few images of an armillary sphere which is like a celestial globe and the rings that you see represent the heavens and the earth and it looks to have been made originally around the third century bc and they've been around a long time and used in a lot of art i didn't fill these spaces in because i didn't want to just put something in there that didn't have any sort of meaning for me I didn't want to just make something up and think, oh, I'll just shove this in there. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. So I left them open. And I don't think it matters that it's open because it is a very open sort of roof area. And the um, the shadows on the floor when the sun hits it and moves across is absolutely gorgeous. Wouldn't you just know it would be pouring down today? But, you know, you can't have everything, I suppose. But yeah, so that's how I finished off the dome. I think it's gorgeous. I love it. Right, so let's get back down here. And you've seen the dome before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on here. We're going to go up the stairs and let me get that pie out of my hand. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. So up we go, up here. And you've seen all this lot up here. Let me open this out. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of things I want to say about this bottom bit here. I'm going to close the the um, the gates again. Was Tamina? You told me quite a while ago, actually, that I hadn't put these in the right place. Well, you didn't say it like that. You said it <laughs> very kindly. Asked me the question: Why were these lower down? And they weren't supposed to be lower down. It is just I don't know. I did, did these first, and I think all the rest were supposed to be this low down, but they wouldn't have made sense this low down. So yeah. I quite happily moved these up a whole block and uh, so they're in the right place now so thank you for pointing that out. Another thing that was pointed out to me which I don't completely understand because I'm not an architect was that some aspect of these stairs weren't going to comply with safety regulations. No idea what you mean chaos, no idea whatsoever. I can get up and down these stairs without falling down. Remember the butterfly, Sid? <laughs> lovely, lovely jubbly. Right, and this top bit here, haven't changed anything since I finished this. Up here, this top bit, quite like that. And of course, every bare bit of wall, or should I say every wall that doesn't have anything on it. And the, these do, so I wasn't going to do anything else here. But as we go along, you'll find that some walls have nothing on them at all. Like this one here, that was supposed to have something on it, something chiselled on it. Um... I don't think I would have put anything in there. There's not that much space, really. And going over the bridge here. We'll get too close to the edge because that step up mod makes me nearly jump over it. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that. But down here, let's just go down here a little bit here. Look at this big wall here. Big wall there. Big wall there. Those were supposed to have something on them as well. Oh, love these. Love them. And then this one here as well, that was supposed to have something on it. And this one. And then up the stairs, 
they were going to have pan I was going to do panels for these and I just didn't have time to do it really before the end of the season is upon us and of course with the problems with the um well just over chiseling everything um I never knew it would it would you know I would create a problem for myself but there you go I'll know and um yeah I shall be very careful with my chiseling in future <laughs> Very careful. Well, I'm a careful chiseler, but I didn't know that, you know, my careful chiseling would, you know, be overdone. There was also a translocator down there that I never got to either. <laughs> Have you spotted it? Have you spotted it? Look at that. Sid put that in there. <laughs> What's he like? Um, Punk put this diving board in and Sid put Terry the rubber duck in there. Oh, well, looks very happy, actually. Very happy. He looks like he's heading towards the fountain so he can have a little, you know, little dive under the fountain. But he's probably, um, you know, quite happy with the rain at the moment. And, of course, the elves have been dabbling in there, haven't they? Let's carry on round here. Bye, Terry the Duck. <laughs> oh, dear. Deary me. And, of course, since I finished this bottom bit, I don't think I've changed anything about this. I did try my hardest to try and get these candles to be yellow glowing candles but i just couldn't do it i tried all sorts and nothing was working so i haven't changed anything about down here since i actually finished it so this is just the same so um and i'm you know really chuffed with how this came out really really right let's get upstairs okay so there is a little bit of extra lighting i did in the bottom part so I'm just going to these stairs now and you'll see that as soon as we enter the stair and I look up. And I wanted to have some more of those teardrop, um, uh, you know, the, the teardrop lights that I made. I wanted more of those in here in a central area um, because I'd made this big space in the centre. So I'm going to go over here and then if I look up, that's where I put them up there. And you'll see them a little bit more as I go up the stairs. I've got to get rid of all this rubbish here, which I will do. Oh, yeah, it's not working right over here, is it? So laggy. And the rain keeps coming in somewhere. I don't know why that keeps happening. But as I come up here, there we go. Those are the teardrop lights. And I, I, I absolutely love those. I wanted something in the centre. I hope it doesn't make... Um, Make it look too much like a supermarket mall. It, that wasn't my intention at all. I just wanted a little bit more lighting in that central area. So, let's have a look at this bedroom that I changed. That I'd been working on. This is the only place, really, that the only sort of... It is a room, and it's the only room I haven't done something with. I had thought it would be a nice little library, but um, but it's it's not going to be anything really. You can use your imagination what you would put in there. So let's have a look in the bedroom. Can you see a bit of the flooring? Here we go around here. This is the bedroom. And as you remember, I used acacia logs, the carved fancy age acacia logs for the beams along the side walls. And then I used the um uh the f uh what's they call it now the phyllite um rock that eight digits sent me and you know when i looked at it and wondered where i could use it it ties in so beautifully with the purple heart logs you put them next to each other they go together they really do so here we are is the bedroom on this wall we've got lots of uh, tables and some of the um Ooh, that's nice. That's nice and quiet, isn't it? And some of the scroll racks, some books and things on the floor. Um, this is the flooring that I designed for in here. And I wanted to bring some of the pink and cream marble rock, which I think went with the purple heart as well. And then I wanted to use some of the wallpaper for a carpet around the bed. Um, because I didn't know until I saw Punk's video on the library that you could put this on the floor that is absolutely amazing and so if we go to the back and look up 
That's the bed that I've chiseled. As you can see, uh, the philite rock and the purple heart just go together so, so well. It had to be, had to be that. I made a big bed spread for the bed. Got tassels on the bottom as well. On the bottom of the bed as well. It could have ended up being um, one of those beds with a canopy on top, but I didn't really want that. I thought that would make the room look a lot, lot smaller. So I just chiseled something fancy at the bottom. And I quite like the look of that and the, the head of the bed. Well, this is what I did first, really. Once I'd got the basic shape of the, the bed, bef even before I'd put on this top bit here, I did the, the head of the bed. And I wanted it to be sort of big and fancy and I wanted it to have circles in it and I wanted it to have some of the flower theme that was on the dome on the outside so I put some of those in and then the middle part is again it's another flower um, going up the middle uh, with leaves on either side and I actually made those have a lot of depth by adding quite a few layers to those so I hope that um, gives the impression of, of depth on there. I think it, I think it does it okay. Pillows, I didn't, wasn't right sure how to do pillows. So I hope those look, you know, sort of fairly comfortable pillows. And then we've got the white sheets on um, the inside of the bed that comes over and um, neatens off that edge on top of the bedspread there. And again, that's another design that I, um, I put in there that I thought would go quite nicely with it. And yes, this is this here, it, although it says philite rock, it's not philite rock, that's bamboo, that. But I wanted it to look like it was draping down, so it had to have a, um, a, a vertical pattern in it. So, yeah, so that is the bedroom. And of course, you can see that these lights are the ones I designed very, very early in, well, it wasn't very early actually, about halfway through the series. If you remember, I designed quite a few lights um, the candlesticks, the um, the pearl, the the, the pearl shaped uh, drop, um, the large one that's out there, and then these here, which um, I saw a design for a, a lantern like this, a lantern holder like this on the internet. I thought, oh, I wonder if I could do that, and so I drew it on a piece of paper, and then I um, I chiselled it out, and um, yeah, the only difference being from when you first saw it was that. Um, the lantern only came down to there. And I've had to make it bigger because when I put the lantern in on the floor, it was so diddy. It was like, no, that's got to be taller. So I added another curve at the front there and just elongated the um, the legs at the back. So, and I put one on the other side. I've got a little table and uh, on either side uh, with a few of the... Uh, a few of the vintage story treasures that you can get around the place yeah so that's the bedroom and I quite like the way that that's turned out I'm really really chuffed with it really chuffed and then of course there's the um the decking the decking is downstairs and you can't see a lot from up here on the decking downstairs so I'm going to walk down the stairs and go out onto the decking. I wish, I just wish it wasn't raining. In fact, it is getting night time. What time is it? It's seven o'clock. We could sleep and hope that by tomorrow the rain will have gone. We could do that, couldn't we? I did have a little bit of a dilemma of what to do here because these are supposed to represent lace curtains down here very fine sort of like you know lace curtains that will sort of like billow and flow with the slightest draft but that was going to be hard to do that was going to be really hard to do and I was going to have a go but then once the problem started with chiseling I just wanted something just much more simple and quicker I didn't want to spend loads and loads of time uh, chiseling any further so this is sort of a simplified version and I have to use your imagination that if there was the slightest breeze in here, those would billow out. I think they look okay. So 
So let's put this down and let's have a snoozer rune. Right, it's four and I can't hear any rain and I don't know whether that's just because I'm inside or not. I think it might be. There we go. Yeah. No, it's still raining. Still raining. Oh my goodness. May. Does it rain all May? Really, does it? Don't know. Don't know about that. It is quite early in the morning. Shall we wait a bit until the sun comes up? I think we could. What is this here? What's that? Is that... What is it? Oh, is it... Oh, is it the book? Is it a book that's sticking through the wall? That shouldn't be doing that, should it? <laughs> I'm not going to remove it now. It is what it is. Right, it's 6.21. Shall I have an early morning look at the decking? Oh, I can't believe it's raining. Yeah, it's still raining. Okay, the decking is out this way. So I did look change a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the bottles of wine and brandy and whatnot with um, proper bottles because Punk came and gave me a big case full of his liquor, which was, which was awesome because um, I didn't like the, just the plain glasses, uh, the plain bottles that didn't have anything in. Because you couldn't see them properly. And then... Now, who was it who suggested a brazier on here? I can't remember, but I'll have a look. I'll just check because I don't want to say a name that is, is incorrect. Um, but thank you ever so much for that suggestion because it gave me ideas on what to do with this. But the suggestion was for a brazier and for the seating that I'd made around the pond, which was the seating I made in the dome as well. I used them in, in both those places. So I chiseled the brazier and then used my trusty pantograph to get the seats in. So thanks ever so much for that. So the last thing I've done on the Rusty Geese server is to make a brazier. And this is what my brazier looks like. And I would have lit it so that it looked the part. But do you know, it's raining. So you know it's not going to stay lit. But you could light it. I made it so that you could light it. And then all the ashes and everything falls down into this bit down at the bottom. So that the, the flame part would be up there. So there we go. The braziers that uh, Sid brought me and he put in this bit here. I've pushed out towards the edge here. I, don't, I put that other one on the other side there. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, that's the decking with the brazier in the centre and the seating around them. And I think they place quite appropriately because I can imagine a roaring fire in that brazier. So you wouldn't want to sit too close to it, I don't think. I wish now with this rain that there was a cover over it, but then they wouldn't come out to use the brazier. And I don't, I certainly don't think you'd be sat on these uh, settees while it was raining like this, would you really? <laughs> I think you'd want to go indoors. I don't know really what I'd call this seating style. I don't know. Maybe I should look that up and see if there's a special name for that. So I'm quite chuffed with that. Quite chuffed with the way that that's turned out. So for a last look around this place, I'm going to... I'm just going to eat some of my pie, get that out of here, and up we go. And there we are. That's my Rivendell inspired build. A lot, a lot more could have gone into this. I really did not, I really did not know that it would take me so long to do 
all the bits. Although that's chiseling for you, it takes a, it takes a long time to chisel, doesn't it? It really does. It takes a long time to chisel. But yeah, I had intended to do quite a number of buildings in this sort of style around here. But I've taken all the markers down now, really. But um, yeah. yeah, it would have been nice to have filled the top of this mountain with buildings like this. But just like the docking area that I'd planned and the ships that I'd planned down there. Well, you can't do everything. There's only a limited amount of time, isn't there? And see his little caterpillar is still there? Wouldn't move any of his stuff. Wouldn't move any of his stuff, I really wouldn't. Let's just have one last look at this bedroom. And I'm feeling a lot more confident with colours these days as well. And when I saw that fill out next to the um, purple heart, it just had to go in there. I really, really, really liked the way that they both went together. So I'm going to try and get rid of all these chest monsters down here. That'll take me a while because there's quite a few of them. I just want to say a great big thank you to the rest of the Rusty Gears for playing on this server, for giving me so much inspiration, for sharing, for helping, for advising. I just can't tell you how much I've learnt from these wonderful people on this server. I am so looking forward to season four. I really, really can't wait. And I'm excited for all the new people that are gonna be on the server. It's gonna be quite an exciting time and I hope I can help them as much as I've been helped on my first season of Rusty Gears. And finally, to all you wonderful viewers who have written so many comments and so you've <laughs> made me laugh, you've given me inspiration, you've given me support and I really, really appreciate it and really thank you for it. So I'm gonna leave off here in the bedroom and I'm gonna sit up on the bed. Right here. There we go. So take care everybody. Stay safe and well. And I'll see ya in the next episode. Bye bye.